making yourself a nuisance. Hermes! You're only being friendly, aren't you, Hermes? I'm surprised to see you out here without your dogs. Well, they're at home. I thought I'd just come on my own and look for a few seedlings. Oh, yes, your trees. I meant to have a day out here yesterday, but what with a countryside march... Oh, of course. How did it go? It was wonderful. Quite inspirational, really. Oh. You know, I went up with Christine and Debbie Aldridge. Quite a jolly crowd. Well, it would have been, except for... Well, you know. well yes, of course. I very nearly rang up Christine and said, No, I'm sorry, I can't go. But the idea of sitting around all day thinking about John... No, I can understand that. Thank goodness I did. When I got in the middle of that great crowd marching down Pall Mall with all the whistles and the banners and the balloons... Good atmosphere, then. Absolutely wonderful. And with all those thousands of people. Well, of course, Marjorie. We are country people, after all. Everyone was cheering and waving as they went by. It was such a good spirit. I only hope it makes the politicians listen. Well, yes, but listen to what, Marjorie? It's like Robert said, there are so many different views about the countryside, even on the march. I mean, there were hunting people there, weren't there? People worried about rural transport. People who don't agree with hunting. So what is it they really stand for? Us, I suppose. Ordinary country people. And what about the Brian Aldridge's? With their great big machines and their huge fields? Yes, I know, but they were there too, I'm sure. Exactly, Marjorie. That's my point. I'm still glad I went, though. When we got to the end of the march and we walked along the serpentine, the sun was just coming out from the clouds and shining on the water. That's when I thought, yes, I'm doing this for John Archer and for all the other John Archers I shall never know. So they'll get a chance to work in the countryside too. Well, we can all agree on that. I'm sorry. I I'm getting a bit carried away, aren't I? Well, it's all very interesting, but I'm afraid Hermes is rather anxious to get on, so... Look, if you... uh, would you mind, Orphe, if I walked along with you? Oh, no, of course not, Margie. We'd be delighted. To be honest, I'd be glad of the company just at the moment. How's it going? Uh, I'm just sitting here staring at these bits of paper. From the undertakers? Yes. I thought they were dealing with everything. Mm. They still need some decisions from us, it appears. I've got to choose a coffin, would you believe? They have some very nice lines on us. Tony. I, I sort of get the feeling they're pushing the little mahogany number of the brass handles. They're only doing their job. Oh, you know something? What? I think you're doing great. Well, certainly doesn't feel like it. Oh, you're holding us all together, honestly. Just keeping busy, that's all. That takes some doing. Uh, I'll tell you who has been brilliant. Helen. Oh, she's grown up a lot. Yeah. Uh, Tommy's the one I'm worried about. I thought he was coping really well at first. Just the last couple of days, though. Can hardly get a word out of him. He feels guilty. Why on earth would he feel that? No, yeah, it's not rational. It's about being brothers. If anybody has a reason to feel guilty... Tony, please don't start on that again. Oh, no. Just... Tell whoever it is to go away. No, we can't. I'll get it. Oh, Janet, come in. If it's not a good time. No, no really. Hello, Tony. Janet. I just wanted to discuss the service with you, but I can easily come back later. No, no, no. Now is as good a time as any. Uh, yes. Um, sit down, Janet. Thank you. Um, have you thought about the flowers? Well, let's just keep it simple, shall we? Uh, well, you could say, um, the flowers from the immediate family only, and then suggest that other friends contribute what they'd have spent on a donation to a charity. Oh, yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, John would have liked that. Right, then. <laughs> Speaking of flowers, have you been down the Felpersham Road lately? No. Oh, I've just come down there. There's bunches of flowers laid at the side of the road nearest to the site of the accident. Oh. Well, I don't think I'll go and look at them quite yet. Uh, was there anything else, Janet? Only I've got a lot to get on with. Well, there was one other thing. I 
I know you want a simple service, as simple as possible, but have you had any thoughts about who you'd like to speak or read? Well, I don't know. Uh, what do you think? Well, I've thought of asking Hayley Jordan. We're, we're very keen for John's friends, you know, his, his generation to be represented. Aren't we, Tony? Mm -hmm. And perhaps Roy might be persuaded. Yeah. But look, why don't you just leave all that to me? That is, if you feel you can. Oh, yeah. I think we can trust you to do the right thing. And if there's anything else I can do, anything... Yeah, we know. Thanks. Kate. Hello, Roy. Are you all right? Not really. Fancy meeting you. Yeah. Quite a surprise. Yeah. You want a drink? No, I've got one, thanks. Stupid, all this. Yeah. I keep thinking the door will open and he'll come charging in, you're laughing all over his face. Shouting out, fooled you, yeah, I know. And then you realise he won't. No. I mean, what the hell do we do now, Kate? There's nothing we can do. That's the worst of it. We've just got to pull together, Roy. Support each other. What else? Have you seen Hayley? No. I phoned Josie, you know, the woman she childbinds for. Says Hayley turned up for work, but she made her take the day off. She might have gone home to her mum's place in Birmingham. Yeah. Probably wants to be on her own for a bit. Well, I can understand that. Hayley's strong. She can look after herself. Yeah, she is. Well, now I suppose we've got the funeral to look forward to. <laughs> Look forward. Listen, I've, I've been thinking. Of... Go on. Well, there is something we can do. What do you mean? About the funeral. Well? We don't want some kind of boring old C of E dirge groaning on forever, do we? Well... Well, come on, Roy. John was never exactly a mad, keen, happy clappy, was he? Hey, it's down to what Pat and Tony want, isn't it? Well, yeah, but listen. I mean... Well, Pat and Tony have never been particularly churchy at the best of times. So, what are you saying? Well, I, I think we should go and see Janet Fisher. Janet Fisher? I've always thought she seemed quite cool for a vicar. Well, we could plant a tree. Like a tree somewhere. Would oh, that be good? Sit on Bridge Farm in a field or something, you know, near where it happened. That's creepy, Roy. In the churchyard, then? Oh, that's more like it. You a good idea. Well, come on, then. What? We're going. Well, where? To find the Reverend Janet Fisher. Well, let's see how cool she really is. There is actually another matter I need to discuss with you, Marjorie. Yes, Linda? This wretched housing development at Sawyer's Farm. I've drummed up some support from certain local councillors, but I still need more signatures for the letter to the planning committee. I don't suppose it's uppermost in people's minds at the moment. Oh, don't. That's the whole point. The letter of objection has to get to the committee by the end of this week. That means I simply have to go round asking for the support of such leading members of the Ambridge community as yourself. I'm very flattered, Linda. Of course I'll sign. Oh, good. Hello. Oh, Hello, Janet. Yeah. I bumped into you. Not literally, I'm happy to say. <laughs> no. no I, I wanted a quick word, Marjorie. Really? What about? Well, just a few things about the funeral on Thursday. Now, I presume Phil will be playing the organ. Yes, that's right. He's agreed. I'm glad. I was just checking up about the cleaning. Don't worry, Janet. I've got it all in hand. I was certain you would have. Oh, and uh, about the Trees of Time and Place project... Yes? Well, I thought we could have a meeting soon about planting some in the churchyard. What an excellent idea. We've just come back from gathering seedlings, haven't we, Marjorie? Oh, you have got a lot. <laughs> well, keep up the good work. I'll be in the church for an hour or so in case you think of something I've forgotten. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Janet. Yes, Linda, we have, haven't we? What, Marjorie? Gathered a lot of seedlings. Well, I did help a little bit. You're all right, love. Oh, Try to sort out these invoices. Uh, how's it going? Slowly. Yeah. I know what you mean. Everything I do seems to take twice as long as usual. Yeah. Like trying to move about underwater. Worse. I suppose I can just about make sense of it. I've just been on the phone to the undertaker. Apparently the coroner's been in contact. Oh, no. Uh, it's perfectly all right. All routine. The date of the inquest should be set for a few weeks' time. I'll go into Borchester to see the undertaker tomorrow. Oh, well.
Oh, you are struggling, aren't you? It's all just swimming in front of my eyes. Why don't you take up Clary's offer? Let her take over for a couple of days. She can't do the accounting, Tony. And in a way, I think it helps to have something to do. Oh, don't I know it. However badly I'm doing it. Thank goodness for David and everybody. Yeah. Don't know what I'd have done without him and Mike. How are things going at Brookfield? Uh, well, of course, David says everything's fine. Ed is helping with the lambing. Oh, he's good with sheep, is Eddie? Mostly? Yeah, mostly. Neil's over with the pigs sorting things out there. And Tommy's helping. Mm. Even Brian has sent one of his casuals over to lend a hand. Everybody's been fantastic. Yes, yeah, we're very lucky. So, all I have to do is to look after the funeral arrangements. Which you're doing really well. Hmm. Tony. Yes, I'm... Thanks. Oh, uh, thanks to you, love. We will go through this, won't we? As long as we keep busy. Sometimes I wonder... Of course we'll get through. We've got to for the kids' sake. And for ours. Come here, darling. <sighs> Families do get through these things, don't they? Even terrible things like this. Eventually. Yeah, eventually. They must. Wow! Those sandwiches look good. They're nearly ready, David. Oh, I'll just take my mucky boots off. Oh! You've made enough to feed a regiment. It is a regiment. There's Mike, Neil, Brian's casual. Never remember his name. Uh, Andy, isn't it? There's you, me, the girls in the dairy. Yeah. Tony will presumably want something when he gets back from the Undertaker's. Oh, poor Tony. Yeah. How's Pat today? Coping a little better, I think. Like Tony, just keeping busy in the dairy. She was so down yesterday. Well, it's bound to take time. But she's pushing herself too hard. I try to get her to slow down, but... Well, at least she's a little bit more cheerful today. Good. Who's a little bit more cheerful? Nobody, dear. Oh, I see. Hello, David. Pat. Sure, I'll have to redo all my dairy accounts. Now, now, where are we with these sandwiches? Oh, Pat, careful with that knife. There's really no hurry. Uh, just leave them to me, oh, dear. No, no, it's all right. I can manage, really. It's all right. It isn't all right. Be careful with Ouch. that knife. Sorry. Oh, you're nearly cutting your fingers off. Oh, dear. Come on, I'll take over. Everything takes such ages. Now, just let me. All right. All right. You sit down. There's no need for all this. When folk offer help, just take it. I know. You're, you're absolutely right. People have been marvellous. Yeah, I just feel so tired all the time. Well, that's perfectly natural. It's the stress of everything, trying to be strong for everyone. Oh, well, I don't feel very strong at the moment. Don't be so hard on yourself. Give yourself time to grieve. I'd really rather not discuss grieving at the moment, Peggy. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, no, there's cheese and pickle, David, ham and mustard and chicken and stuffing. Oh, um, I'll have one of, uh, oh, let me see, one of each kind, I think. And a mug of tea. Oh, thanks, Peggy, just a job. How's it all going? Uh, everything under control, I think. Um, there was something there. What's that? Well, Mike didn't want to ask you himself. Ah, uh, I, I think I know what it'll be. He'd just like to know what your plans are for reopening the farm shop. Yeah. Dear, I don't, I don't really know what to say. We haven't discussed it. No, I know, Mike realises. But it's not fair to leave him up in the air. Uh, look, look, could you just say, I'll discuss it with Tony, and, and at the moment we've come to a decision... Yeah, I'm sure he'll understand. Uh, early next week, perhaps. I'm right. sorry, I really... No, no. I'll go. I simply can't say. No, it, Mike understands that. that that's why he asked well, me to... Hello, Roy. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wally. Oh, come in, Roy. Oh, thanks. Are you looking for your dad? Yeah, That's right. He's just up the north field pulling the last of the leeks. Should be down for his lunch any minute. Oh. Well, why don't you stay and have a sandwich? No, thanks, Mrs. Archer. Can't stop. Only my dad told me to meet him here. You're going to take a look at Uncle Tom's greenhouse. Mike told me the whole story. <laughs> what store is that, Roy? 
Well, there was a bit of an accident with Mrs. Antrobus's greenhouse. <laughs> a tree fell on it. Slight miscalculation of the angle on Mike's <laughs> part. Well, anyway, uh, Dad reckons he might ask Mr. Forrest to sell us his greenhouse, and then we can dismantle it, take it down to Nightingale Farm, and put it up there for Mrs. A. Well, I'm sure Uncle Tom will be only too glad to sell it. After all, it's just mouldering away up there. Yeah, Dad reckons it should still be in reasonable nick, and we're going up to Keeper's Cottage to suss it out this afternoon. Well, at least have a cup of tea first. No, no. Thanks all the same. Can you tell me, Dad, that's where I'll be? Yeah, of course we will. Right. I'll be running along then. Bye. Bye, Roy. Bye. What a nice boy he's turned out to be. Yeah, he's really buckling down to helping his dad this week. I believe he's taking some days off university. <sighs> the kids are all being terrific. Helen's helping in the dairy and Tommy's out with Neil sorting the porkers. I'm glad to hear Tommy's coming out of his shell a bit. Well, not so as you'd notice. He's still hardly spoken a word. Tony's very worried, but tell you who I'm concerned for. Yes. Haley. Yes. Haven't seen her since last Friday. Haley. Haley. Haley, over here. Hello. It's me, Roy. Oh, hi, Roy. Oh, I thought it was you. Oh, sorry, I was miles away. Yeah, I shouted and shouted. I can't have heard you. Oh, no. What are you doing wandering up about here? Well, I could ask you the same. I asked first. I was just walking about, thinking. Well, nobody's seen you for days. I just didn't want to talk to anyone, really. No, yeah, I thought that's what it must have been. I rang Josie and she told me she'd given you time off. Checking up on me? Oh, of course not. I'm sorry. Didn't mean that. Have you been to have a look at April Cottage? Yeah, yeah, I have. Look, if you want to be on your own... No. No, it's all right. I just wanted to have a... have a look at the place. I don't know. Lots of memories. Not all of them good ones. Oh, it's good to see you anyway. Oh, and you. That I was on my way to Keeper's Cottage. Oh, I wish Mr Forrest was there now. I could really do with talking to him. Well, you can talk to me. Oh, no, I can, Roy. What are you doing at Keeper's Cottage, anyway? Oh, it's this blooming greenhouse of Tom's. Dad wants to buy it off him to replace Mrs A's. Oh. So I'd better get over there now and wait for him to turn up. So you can talk to me, you know, about anything. You mean about John? Well, yeah, but anything. I don't think I'm quite ready yet, Roy. Oh. I will, I promise. But not yet, I'm sorry. It's all right. I tell you what. Yeah? Perhaps we could meet later. Oh, well, how about this evening in the cat? Oh, I don't think I can face the cat at the moment. People and... Yeah, I see. We could go for a walk or something. There is something I do need to talk about to someone. Well, anything. Something really important. I'll be all right, really. You are sure? Really. Go on, then. What? Whatever it is, you're almost on the point of telling me. Oh, I don't know. Go on. It's a bit unfair of me, I know. What is? I am finding Peggy totally exhausting. <laughs> she never stops. I can't do anything right, not even in my own kitchen. Oh, dear. Driving me completely potty. Well, I can imagine. I know what she can be like, even under... Normal circumstances? Yeah. I wonder if we'll ever have normal circumstances again. I know. Oh, well, I'll uh, pop in and see how the girls are doing. I suppose if I can do battle with the dairy paperwork, I don't feel quite so useless. Oh, you're very far from that. If anyone else tells me how well I'm doing, I promise I shall scream. No, I, I won't say it then. <laughs> hey. I'll see you then, eh? Yeah. See you tomorrow, David. Thanks. <sighs> Think nothing of it. Bye. So I measure up the greenhouse, you know, give it a good looking over, take all the details home, then what happens? What? Well, Dad turns up from Bridge Farm and has a look at them. Yeah. He reckons he can offer Tom Forrest ten quid for the greenhouse. So he gets on the phone to the laurels right away. Only Tom won't accept ten quid, will he? Says he wants fifty. Oh, no. So Dad's absolutely livid. Of course he feels he has to accept. It's not actually a bad price, but you know, fifty quid was exactly what Mrs A paid him to do the job in the first place. So he didn't make a penny profit, poor man. Oh, yeah, you should have seen his face. It was a picture. <laughs> oh, I bet it was. 
You don't think it's very funny? Oh, I'm sorry, Roy. Oh, I know you're trying to cheer me up. Yeah, I was. I'm sorry I didn't get in touch. No, it's a free country. No. Shouldn't have you and Kate worrying about me. Only, there wasn't... Yeah? I couldn't really talk to anyone. Well, not even your mum? Not even her. Or you. We're all in this together, Hayley. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. Why? What on earth do you mean? I try and explain. But don't push me, OK? It's not easy for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. Don't mean to be mysterious. <laughs> Last week, John asked me to go out for a meal with him. Mm -hmm. We went to this really posh restaurant. It was all right at first. We chatted and that and had a few laughs. It's a bit like old times. He was knocking the wine back a bit. I think he was nervous. Then he put out this box. Oh, as soon as I saw it, I knew what it was. I just went cold. Well, what was it? It was a ring. One of them ring boxes, you know. It was an engagement ring. He asked me to marry him. Oh, blimey. Oh, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say. I was so confused, Roy. I mean, oh, I loved him. I really did. I was so hurt by all that stuff with Sharon. What did you do? I turned him down. I see. So there you have it. Oh, listen, Hayley, you mustn't start blaming yourself. It was an accident. He had an accident on the tractor. It wasn't even a modern one. It was that clapped out old Fergie of his dad's. He put it in a ditch and it rolled over on top of him. What's that got to do with you turning him down? Because he was brilliant with tractors. He could drive a tractor in his yeah, sleep. But he was careless. That is it. Don't you see? That's what I'm saying. He was careless. His mind wasn't on what he was doing. It right. Right. So... so why wasn't his mind on what he was doing? I don't know. I wasn't there. Because he was thinking about me. He was thinking about us. I turned him down. That's what he was thinking about when he should have been concentrating on the tractor. Right? Yeah, yes. but it's... And now... Now I've got to do this thing. And I dread it more than anything. It scares me to death, Roy. What? I've got to go to Pat and Tony Archer. And tell them what I've just told you. I've got to tell them what I did to their son. Yes, right, right. Six thousand, that's right. Yep, good. At the price agreed in my original... Yes? Six thousand what, Dad? Oh, just a minute, Debbie. Uh, when can you complete delivery? Right, yes, well, that should be fine. Good, good. Thank you. <laughs> and it's good to be Mrs. with you. Thank you. Goodbye. Wait. Yes, Dad? Just confirming an order. I could tell that much. An order for what? 6,000 pheasant poles. 6,000? Poles. Six weeks old for June delivery. <laughs> I know exactly what you're going to say. Oh, Dad, I'm used to it. Don't worry. All right, I didn't consult you. No, I'm just a little surprised that you're thinking of expanding the shoot just now. Well, I agree. It'll never make a bomb, but the Borchester Land Directors want it. A couple of them mad keen on shooting. And what they want, they generally get. Well, those are the commercial realities, yes. Oh, it would have been nice to have been consulted, but the shoot is your thing. I know, I'm sorry. It's been so frantic lately, I honestly forgot. Mm. But wait a minute, um, there is something I want to consult you about. Oh? You might take a look at this brochure when you've got a minute. What is it? Well, now we've decided we're getting rid of the beef and the deer. Oh, well, I'm still not convinced about the beef. Just look at this brochure when you get a minute. So I think we should seriously consider this it's gigantic cuts 50 acres of cereals in a day we can do with one machine what we're currently doing with three and how are we going to handle the grain the dryer can't possibly cope with that sort of volume oh we can use the old beef shed as a drying floor feed it through the dryer at a nice easy pace right mm, you can see you've got it all worked out yeah i've given it a lot of thought uh, look dad um I thought I'd give Tolly a gallop just for half an hour. Huh. Oh, very well for some. <laughs> I'm entitled to a break. Come on. Well, I'll get on with drilling the peas while you swan off and enjoy yourself. <laughs> my dad, the tractor driver. Excuse me, I do get my boots dirty sometimes, you know. <laughs> yeah. And I must go over and see if there's anything they need at Bridge Farm. 
it, hey, it was kind of you to lend them, Andy. Oh, I just try and imagine what it must be like for Tony. You uh, all right, Haley? Oh, I'm all right, yeah. Waiting for Roy, are you? Yeah. Well, I'm sure he won't be long. Oh, he's probably bumped into some mates in Borchester. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's just making sure everyone knows about the funeral tomorrow. Uh, yeah, of course. John's mates and that. I'm ever so sorry, Sid, and I won't be able to come. The pub doesn't run itself, I'm afraid. Oh, it's all right. I understand. Um, Hayley. Yeah? I hope you don't think it's awful of me to ask you this. What's that? Uh, I was wondering if you might like a bit of extra work. Um, I really it, don't It'd know. be every Wednesday. Looking after Jamie. Only Borchester Green School rang me this morning. They want me to cover a teacher who's away on a course. It's a whole term's work. Just what I was looking for. Oh, I'm sorry, Cathy. I might be able to help you sometimes, but I can't commit myself. Not to a regular arrangement. It wouldn't be fair on Josie. No. Well, never mind. It was just an idea. But thank you for thinking of me. Oh, that's all right. Um, well, I think I'd better go. Oh, I haven't upset you, have I? No, no. Look, if Roy comes in, could you just tell him that I'll see him later? Tell him I've gone up to Bridge Farm. He'll know what that's about. Well, uh, I'll see you then. Oh, <coughs> bye, Hayley. Bye. Oh, bye, Hayley. Kaz? Uh, hmm? You didn't ask him, did you? Well, yes, I did, as a matter of fact. <laughs> and... She can't help. Not on a regular basis, anyway. I think the whole idea is ridiculous. Oh, thank you for your generous support. I don't support you in this, Cathy. I think it's daft. Paying a childminder to mind your kid while you go out and look after some of the poor beggars. While your husband has to buy an extra help to cover the work you should be doing in the bar and restaurant. Oh, should be? Yes, yeah, should oh. be. It doesn't make sense. It isn't just about the money. Oh, well then, perhaps you better tell me what it is about. It's about me wanting more out of life than pulling pints and frying in chips. That's what it is. Something you'll never understand in a million years. Oh, I'm going out. <laughs> And where do you think you're going? I'm going to take Jamie for a walk. The lunchtime crowd will be in in a minute. Well, you sort them out. And good luck. I've had enough. Jenny asked me to ask you about flowers. Oh, just something very simple. Or oh, we do have a charity you could donate to. Right. Oh, hello, Brian. I see you're in your work clothes. Yeah, I've been on a tractor pulling a seed drill today. But it does you good. It's a matter of opinion. It keeps you close to the soil. Andy keeping up with things here. Oh, yes, yes, he's been great. Thanks for letting us borrow. Oh, it's nothing. I will get back on track as soon as I can. But there's just so much to do. Not just the funeral. I've had the health and safety inspector this afternoon. Third time she's been back. Well, that's just routine, though, surely. Look, I I'd better be going up. I'll see you tomorrow at the church. Cheer then. B bye, Brian. Bye. Was that awful? Well, Brian, to tell you the truth, I can't remember no. what he said. No, 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 I meant the HSE woman. I still can't go up there to the field, Pat. I can't face it. Of course you can't. Then what she must think of me. Oh, I thought she seemed quite a nice woman. She knows I'm responsible. She keeps asking about the tractor, the Fergie. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Just gets to me, that's Nobody all. holds you responsible. It was an accident. Listen to me, Tony. Nobody does. All right. Hello, Cathy. Oh, hi, Debbie. It's a bit bumpy for that buggy. Oh, Jamie doesn't mind. Do you, Jamie? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite blowy today. Yeah, just why I need to blow away the cobwebs. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I just have to get away from it all, too. Dad is being particularly annoying at the moment. Oh? You think you've got problems? Oh, you too? Oh, Sid's driving me up the wall. It's, it's just the feeling that nothing you say counts for anything. Tell me about it. They go on about, uh, oh, you know, uh, talking things through, finding a consensus. Yeah, but when the chips are down... They do exactly what they intended in the first place. <laughs> do you know, Debbie, I think we found a certain amount of common ground here. <laughs> it rather looks like that. Well, what do you propose to do about it? Oh, what I usually do. And that is? 
Let him think that he's in charge. <laughs> ah, do what you've decided to do anyway. And let him think he thought it all up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I'm really glad I bumped into you. <laughs> yeah, me too. You've cheered me up no end. <laughs> Can I have a word? Oh, of course you can, Hayley. Sit down. Oh, you look busy. Oh, no, it's just paperwork. It'll wait. Oh. Well, where have you been? We were worried about you. Well, I just went away for a bit. I had a bit of thinking to do. Hayley, I... There's something I want to tell you about John. Uh, yes, I rather thought it might be. I don't know where to begin. Wherever you like. This is hard. I'm listening. Well, you know, after all that Sharon business, John was trying to get us back together. Yeah. He asked me out one night, last Tuesday. We went to the Mont Blanc. Oh, he really made a fuss at me, Pat. Really tried hard to be nice, to make it all up to me. He asked me to marry him. Oh. Yeah. And what did you say? I said no. Hayley, I, I think I can see where this is leading. Well, can you? Listen to me. I've said this to Tony. John's death was a tragic accident. Uh, and when such things happen, that there's no logical explanation for it. It, it. it seems completely mad and terribly unfair. So we start looking for explanations. And when we can't find them, we start making them up. I'm not making anything up. Look, do you think I haven't found a hundred and one reasons for blaming myself? Do you think Tony hasn't? He can't even face going into the field where it happened. He feels so guilty. But I am. It was an accident, Haley. Accidents are things that happen out of the blue. That there's no logic, there's no explanation. We're all to blame and none of us are to blame. It just... We miss him so much, and it's almost too much for us to bear. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, I think so. Oh. <laughs> oh, come here. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. I, I understand. <laughs> Look. <clears throat> There's something I want to ask you to do. I, I was talking to Janet Fisher the other day about the service. I'd like you to stand up and say something. Something about John. Oh, um... I don't know if I could. Please. A couple of sentences, even. A couple of sentences? Mm. I should be able to manage more than that. Then you'll do it? Definitely think about it. I wish you would. You all right? Oh, fine, thanks. Here. Have a drink. I think I need one. It's the, uh, <laughs> you know, the single malt with a name I can never pronounce. <laughs> I was so cross with you. Where you? Oh. Mm. This is good. Mm. Put airs on your chest. Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> Sid, I've been thinking. I think we should go to the funeral tomorrow. Oh. I was just going to say exactly the same thing. Shut up shop for an hour. Let them go to the cat if they're desperate. Yep, you're dead right. Well... He is looking at you, kid. <laughs> of all the gin joints in all the world. You had to walk into mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very glad you did. You know, I, I walked past Bridge Farm on my way home this afternoon. Could see a light on in the window. I felt so sorry for Pat and all of them. <sighs> Suddenly, more than anything, I wanted to be back here. At home. Yeah, I'll drink to that. Cheers, Sid. Cheers, Cathy. Here, we can see.
it here? There's not many spaces left. Well, you're going first, Kate. Okay. I'll sit on the end if you don't mind. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Oh, oh look at Tommy. He looks so washed out. Oh, poor Tommy. Fantastic crowd, though, Roy. Oh, Roy, it is. Really <sighs> great. Oh, good, though, isn't it? Oh, I feel a bit sick. Oh, here, here. Suck one of these. What are they? The extra strong mints. <laughs> Shh, Kate. I'm sorry. I think I'd better have one. Oh, there you are, then. I don't want to cry. Oh, hold on to me hand. Uh, you too, Hayley. Have you put me in mint in? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Shh. I'm not very good at this. Oh, I'll hold your hand, too. Ow, not the time. Uh, just behave. Poor Tony. He's as white as a sheet. Do you know, for all the time I've spent up at Bridge Farm, I've hardly seen him all week. He simply hasn't stopped, poor man. Tommy's gone ever so pale as well. Young Helen's grown up so nicely. She's such a fine young woman now. Such a support to her mother. Well, here goes, Jack. Yes, Becky, here goes. May I say, before we begin this service, to everybody, thank you for coming. And an especial thank you to John Daniel Archer's friends and contemporaries who've turned up to pack St. Stephen's out today. This is, in fact, a celebration as well as a funeral service, though that may at first seem a strange word to use. But yes, we are coming together in our grief to celebrate a life, a young life cut tragically short, a good life, a life worth celebrating. Let us remember him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Morning, Graham. Oh, Alistair, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Oh, what can I do for you? A bit of a problem with the lighting in the surgery corridor. Oh, I'm sorry. And the bulbs aren't working. Well, I'll get someone onto it straight away. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you've popped in. Yeah, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Oh. On my way to an appointment. Well, I won't keep you then. Oh, uh, go on. What were you going to say? Well, I don't know where to start, really. Any way you like. It's about the other night. At the Mont Blanc? Yes. Oh, it was nice to bump into you. Was it? Enjoy yourself? <laughs> Did I? Do I hear a note of reservation? The evening did not go exactly as planned. Oh? Well, quite frankly, I'm at a bit of a loss. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't know where I'm going wrong. With Caroline? Oh, quite. I see. Well, Caroline accepts a date with me. Oh, that's a reasonable start. And then spends the whole evening seemingly trying to avoid me. Hmm. A quandary. It certainly is. Women, eh? Oh, quite. There are a couple of things I might be able to suggest. Oh, I hope so. Look, tell you what, why don't we discuss it when I get back? Oh, that'll be great. This job shouldn't take too long. Say about uh, half eleven? I'd appreciate any advice you can give me. Come on, Roy. Yeah, I'm going. All right, you're on, kid. Good luck. Oh, I feel terrible. You'll be okay. Yeah, right. Go for it, Roy. Go on. What's happening next? The order of service says it's Roy Tucker at this point. I'm reading out this poem for John. <coughs> he was my friend. I didn't know until he went away how hard it is to show or wear your feelings on your sleeve. It's hard even to think about him. It's hard to grieve. He taught me this. I didn't know that one day sitting in a room, I'd say, this is all mad, not how it's meant to go. That door should swing and in he'd come, smiling and laughing like a likely lad. But now I wait, and nothing said. The door stays shut, and smiles and laughter dumb. I cannot think of anything to say. Perhaps we'll find fine words another day. For now, this has to do. Words are all choked up and will not flow. That's not the Bible, is it, Peggy? I think it's a poem, Jack. Well, those modern ones, I suppose. Go on, Roy, lad. 
You can do it. We called each other mate. Mostly the best. We shared some laughs, some anger, but never hate. Feelings, they all felt part of it. What human beings do. He was a likely lad, that's all we need to know. He's gone. He was my friend. It all seems wrong. I thought we'd know each other till the end. Well done, Lord. I'm proud of you. I've been giving some thought to your little problem. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, coffee? Oh, just what I need. Well, I've had a couple of ideas. Well, I'd be grateful for anything. Okay. Put it like this. Uh, sugar? No, thanks. I think you're trying too hard. Uh, trying too hard? Yeah. Oh, uh, right. W would, would you care to elaborate? All right. In my experience... Your extensive experience. <laughs> Not that extensive. Go on. Women don't like their men to be too... <sighs> Available? Yes, exactly. And that's what I've been doing. Well, think about it. Oh, well, I don't know what you could possibly mean. <laughs> it's simply been my observation that women don't like their men to be doormats. Is that what I've been? Frankly, I think so, yes. Well, thanks. You asked for my advice? Well, yes, I know. Don't think I'm not grateful. You don't sound it. So, uh, so all right, then. What do you suggest? Try playing hard to get. Oh. Make her feel that you're playing the field. Um, yes. But she's not the only one you're interested in. Even if she is. Especially if she is. <sighs> I'm not very good at playing games. It's not about games. It's about attitude. Um, I don't understand. About how you look at yourself. That tie, for a start. And that shirt. <laughs> What's wrong with them? I bet 1950s. Look at yourself in the mirror sometime. Yes. Then take yourself down to that men's boutique in Borchester. Oh, I don't, no, 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 I don't think so. Well, one of the chain stores, then. Spend some money. Give yourself a makeover. Simple as that, eh? Might be a start. Well, thanks very much for the advice. Think nothing of it? No, I'm very grateful. I, I'm supposed to be calling Caroline tonight. Really? I'll bear in mind what you say. Hmm. You've given me a lot to think about. I didn't really want to do this. I didn't want to say anything. Because I thought I was the very last person who should speak at this service. There's three people here changed my mind. That's Janet Fisher. Thank you, Janet. Pat Archer and Tommy Archer. And I want to do this especially for Tommy. Pat said something to me about accidents. And it made a lot of sense, Pat. You said that we just try and find reasons for them. Because there doesn't seem to be a reason we, we try to find reasons to blame ourselves for what's happened. <laughs> Perhaps we do that because we miss John so much. Janet said that we should celebrate John. Well, I think she's right. I'm proud to have known John. He was great. Everybody makes mistakes and we both made our share, God knows. Can say that, can't I? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, what's important is to get him right in our minds. I wanted to find something to say about John. Roy said a lot of it for me in the poem that he read. So I don't need to say what it feels like to miss him. Thanks, Roy. Um, I know John liked this record, and I listened to the words. And I think they say a lot about how I feel about him now. So this is for you. John, Daniel Archer. This is for you. I must say, Peggy, I'm really rather glad that's over. I thought the service was very moving. Which was that all right? I was nearly in tears. There were quite a number in that congregation who were. I didn't know Haley was going to speak. Neither did I. I mean, 
Was that entirely fitting in a church and everything? At one time, Jack, I might have said not. Yeah, I know. But in this case, I thought she acquitted herself with great dignity. Mm. Phil played the organ beautifully. Oh, yes, he did, didn't he? But the burial, Peggy, seeing him going into the ground, uh, makes it all seem too real, doesn't it? Yes, Jack, it does. All too real. Thank you so much, Haley. Oh, no, I should be thanking you. It was good. It did injustice. Mm. Oh, I hated the burial. I'm not much of a one for church going. Oh, that doesn't matter. Doesn't it? Not to me, at any rate. Haley. Yeah? In the days to come, if you ever need someone to talk to... Thanks. I really do mean that. I'd forget about the dog collar. Thanks, Janet. I think we'll be leaving in a minute, Janet. Thank you for staying. Oh, think nothing of it. I wanted to say, I thought you conducted the service with great... What's the word I'm looking for? Sensitivity. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I really appreciate that. I know I haven't always seen eye to eye. I don't think that's important on a day like this, do you, dear? No, Jack, you're right. Oh. Thank you again. Well, thank you. God bless. Well, there's a thing. Hi, Janet. Your face. I've just been speaking to your grandmother. Oh, my Peggy, what about her? She just rather surprised me, that's all. Uh, you know that poem Roy read out? Yes. Well, that was your idea, wasn't it? Well, I might have had a little to do with it. Did you choose it? Oh, no. Well, I, I thought it was really cool. Where's it come from? Hasn't Roy told you? He's being a bit shifty about it, as a matter of fact. <laughs> he wrote it himself. You're kidding. I just said, write down what you're feeling. And he did. <sighs> He's a dark horse, that one. Right. I think I'm going to take Haley home. See you later, shall I? I'll come along with you. All right. I'll see you then, Kate. Roy? Yeah, bye. see ya. What are you looking at me like that for? I'm really proud of you, Roy Tucker. Well, why? What have I done? Just, Manny. Nigel, when you realise how Ellen's been behaving... I, I can't quite... Nigel, will you listen? How Ellen's been what, Mummy? Behaving, Nigel, behaving. B-E-H... There's no need to shout, Mummy, and I can spell. Just about. So what about the way she's been behaving? It's simply shocking, that's all. There's no other word for it. Look, let me get this straight. Have you been listening to a word I've said? As I was explaining, the line was bad. Well, is the line bad now? As clear as a bell. Then what have you been doing about it? About what? About Nelson, of course, and really uh, Nigel. It's just that we've been rather busy. Oh, you're always too busy, Nigel. And did you manage to find a moment of time to see Nelson's solicitor? Uh, he wouldn't tell me anything. He just kept saying that Nelson was a man of mystery. Well, I certainly don't need a solicitor to tell me that. And it is also a mystery what Ellen thought she was playing at. She simply pestered the poor man from dawn until dusk. <laughs> You see, nobody in Ambridge has heard anything. Only that the cottage is for sale and nobody's buying. In any case, Mummy, people have had rather more important matters. Well, I can hardly think of anything more important. And rather sadder matters I on their minds. More important than the complete disappearance of one of your leading inhabitants. I'm sure there's some perfectly innocent explanation. Well, it, it really is rather sad when you see a woman of her age behaving in such an undignified manner. Well, surely you're exaggerating. I never exaggerate. Now she's become... Predatory in recent years. Oh, I've noticed a change in her. I tried speaking to her about it, but you know, my dear sister Ellen, she never takes a blind bit of notice. Mummy, I really do have to go. And now I'm afraid she's <sighs> driven Nelson into exile, poor man, simply driven him to... Mummy, I'm afraid I... ...without chasing him... <sighs> oh, dear, Mummy. We seem to have been cut off. Alistair. Graham, come in. I'm just scrubbing up. Oh, I'm glad to see the lights in the corridor appear to be working. No, your man was very swift and efficient. Scrubbing up? Oh, I've got a sheepdog in the treatment room. Got into a bit of an argument with a barbed wire fence. Ooh. No, oh, he's all right. Some cleaning up and a few stitches will sort him out. Yeah, I'm afraid that sort of thing makes me regret the passing of wooden fences and dry stone walls. Right. Well, the dog's under anaesthetic, feeling no pain. I've got a minute if you want one. Um, what for? Come on, Graham. Did you take my advice? About Caroline? Yes. Well, I thought about what you said, and, uh... Yes? 
I spoke to her on the telephone. Yes, and? I think I could say I was decidedly brusque. Brusque? And when are you next going to see her? I'm going up to Grey Gables this morning. That's being brusque? Oh, the phone call was simply to arrange a conference room for an early meeting with some clients. Ah, I see. What happens when I go up there remains to be seen. I like the tie. Do you? Oh, oh good. Is it new? Well, I, I happen to be quite near the tie shop in Borchester. Mm, all shoes on a yellow ground. Snazzy. I thought it was suitable for a meeting in a country club environment. Very county. Uh, are you pulling my leg? And you'll see something of Caroline up there. Well, I imagine we'll bump into each other, yes. Well, don't forget what I said when you do. Hard to get. Hard to get. Just say it to yourself over and over again. Hard to get. Hard to get. You are pulling my leg. Graham, would I do a thing like that? <sighs> Hello? Nigel? Aunt Ellen? This is a marvellous night. <laughs> is it? You sound as if you're in the next room. Oh, good. Not in chilly old England. <laughs> well, I am in chilly old England, I'm afraid. <laughs> is it, Nigel, I haven't got much time. There's something I have to talk to you about. Not Nelson, by any chance. How did you know where? Oh, just guesswork. You still no idea of his whereabouts? None whatsoever, I'm afraid. He seems simply to have disappeared. Mm, the man of mystery. Beg your pardon? Never mind. You've had no news of him at your end. I'm afraid not, Auntie. <sighs> now, listen to me carefully. Hmm? I think I know the reason why he's gone. Oh, really? Yes. I wonder if I can guess. Joan. Mummy? Yes, I'm afraid so. And look, you're quite sure about this? Oh, no doubt about it. I think perhaps you'll better explain. Well, I shall. I mean... You know, she's always had a bit of a thing for Nelson, hasn't she? Has she? Well, of course she has. You know that as well as I do. Well, this time she's gone just a little too far. In what way is that, then? Well, you know Nelson, always a free spirit, never wanted to be tied down to anyone or anything. Yeah, good old Nelson, yeah. Well, what about him? Gave her the brush off, obviously. You were there at the time, I take it? I didn't have to be, silly boy. She'd been moping about like a lovesick schoolgirl for months, getting on everybody's nerves. I mean, it really was quite pathetic. Oh, dear. And as if that wasn't enough, she simply refused to take no for an answer, Nigel. It really was quite dreadful. I felt so sorry for her. I mean, fancy throwing herself at him like that. Throwing herself? Oh, yes. Oh. It couldn't have been more blatant. Phone calls at every hour of the day or night... Postcards, presents, billy do, sudden appearances in the middle of the night. I had no idea. I do wish you'd have a word with her, Nigel. Oh, do you really think that's necessary? Vital, I would have thought, for the sake of her sanity and everybody else's. Are you all right, dear? You sound rather tired. We've had a death in the village, Auntie. Oh, dear. John Archer, do you remember him? He was killed in an accident at Bridge Farm. Yes, I, I think I remember him. Good looking boy. Oh, dear. How very sad. Do give my condolences to the family. I will. I have to go now. But, uh, give my very best wishes to Elizabeth. Yes, of course. And you take care of yourself, dear boy. And have a word with your mother, mm. too. <laughs> oh, and one other... Well, bye, Auntie Ellen. Tony? Tony? I'm in here, in the tractor shed. Oh, I've been looking for you everywhere. Pat says come and get your lunch. Oh, I think I'll skip it, David, thanks. What are you doing in here? Just having a bit of a think. Oh. You don't want to let things get you down. Get me down? Let things get me down? Oh, sorry. You know what I mean. I've just been thinking. What? The old Fergie. Yeah? I'll give it to the club. They can have it for nothing if they want it. Just as long as I don't have to look at it again. It's a good idea, Tony. I've got no more use for it. You know, when I think of John, I think of him sitting on that tractor. Tony, come on. How long was he lying there under it in that ditch? That's what I'd like to know. Don't dwell on it, Tony. Come on, come down the floor. Lying there, David, shouting out for help. Tony. Shouting to us, to anybody. Somebody should have heard him. But we were all too busy. 
doing things. We didn't hear him. You've got to stop blaming yourself. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, sure. That's what I've got to do, is it? It doesn't do any good. You know, what I did this afternoon, after we finished on that field... I think I can guess. I went to have a look at that tractor. At the field, where it happened. Something I haven't been able to do all week. Uh, I could go down to the undertakers. I could order him a coffin with brass handles. The lot. I could go into that church and listen to those words. I could even watch him going into the ground. But I couldn't go into that field and look at that, that thing. I couldn't. And not until this afternoon. But then, suddenly, I could. That was a brave thing, Tony. Brave? Oh, that wasn't brave. Uh, I'll be brave when I can go into that field and plough it, turn it over. I'll be brave the rest of my life, looking into that ditch, remembering. Come on, mate. Oh, it's all over. I've done everything I can for John, for all of us. Oh, David, tell me, will you? What on earth am I going to do now? <laughs>